Tom Cruise, to me, is so much more than the last legit movie star we have left. He is also, very clearly, someone who understands what entertains people. He understands exactly what to put on screen to incite a reaction out of people. Something that, unfortunately, most of the rest of Hollywood has forgotten how to do. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 once again follows Ethan Hunt and the IMF team as they try to track down a terrifying new weapon that threatens all of humanity if it falls into the wrong hands. Confronted by a mysterious all-powerful enemy, Ethan is forced to consider that nothing can matter more than the mission, not even the lives of those he cares about most. Before I get into anything, I need to reiterate how insanely dedicated Tom Cruise is to his craft, and I appreciate him so much more as an actor and an entertainer because of that. To me, if you are a celebrity with the world at your fingertips, why wouldn't you make movies the way that Tom Cruise does? A lot of people in his position are content just playing it safe. But he continues to up the ante, to challenge himself, to push himself, and I don't know how anyone can't respect that. It is an up at dawn, pride swallowing siege. It's a breath of fresh air in this day and age where effort typically feels minimal, and the final product is typically underwhelming. But to me, there has been nothing underwhelming about the Mission Impossible franchise. If anything, they've overachieved with these movies on a surprisingly consistent basis. And Dead Reckoning Part 1 is another example of just that. Oh, there's a big surprise! From a story perspective, initially while watching it, I felt like it started off a bit too cliche. Basically, they have to get this key before it falls into the wrong hands because it could mean the end of the world. It's that chasing after the MacGuffin plotline that we've seen a thousand times in movies before. But as the movie progresses, you come to realize that that's pretty much every Mission Impossible movie. The difference is, is that this franchise typically does it in a more intelligent and a more entertaining way. I like it a lot. There's a strong element to this film that is commenting on the dangers of AI. Something else that, again, we've seen a million times before. But the way that it's approached in this movie feels a bit more sophisticated, a bit more well thought out. And it really does feel like this movie is coming out at the most appropriate time, especially with the latest AI technology scare that we currently find ourselves in in everyday life. Ah, we're gonna die! I've heard people criticize the character of Ethan Hunt in the past and say that he's a bit too one-dimensional. But for me, this is one of, if not the most, personal story we've had for this character to date. And they add just enough of a backstory to him, and it's not too much where it takes away from the mystique of his character, like a lot of modern movies tend to make the mistake of doing. It's just enough to where it gives an extra layer to his character, but it also doesn't detract from or weigh down the movie. It actually enhances it. Hold on to your butt. And that's always a fine line to walk on, but to me, this movie did it to perfection. The conflict at hand, because it's more personal, makes it feel like the odds are stacked against Ethan more so than they've ever been before. There was more than one instance in this movie, and I'm not even talking about the big action set piece moments. I'm talking about the smaller, dialogue-driven moments where I was actually feeling genuine tension. And it kind of reminded me of the original Mission Impossible movie from Brian De Palma. Kittredge, you've never seen me very upset. Because the dialogue scenes in that movie were always just as thrilling to me as the action scenes were. It's crazy because it kind of feels like Dead Reckoning is taking things back to basics, while also balancing that with taking things more over the top in other areas. Even with the double crosses, which are a common thing in the Mission Impossible franchise. There was a point when I was thinking to myself, how many times is he going to allow this one character to get one over on him? If fool me, we can't get fooled again. But if you think about it, and as the movie progresses, no matter how many times Ethan takes a loss, he always ends up coming out on top. They very much preserve his character, while simultaneously not making him feel invincible. In fact, I felt like he actually felt more human this time around 
than maybe any other movie prior to this. The returning cast is great as always, everyone from Ving Rhames to Simon Pegg to Rebecca Ferguson. Because she got a great ass! This movie also features the return of the Kittredge character from the original movie, which also contributes to this feeling of things going full circle. And they do continue the uneasy relationship he has with Ethan Hunt, and it was fun to see that play out on screen again. It felt like they'd been trying to replace that character in every single Mission Impossible movie past the first one, but now we have the real thing back again. Do the same thing as last time. Hayley Atwell is the newest addition to the cast, and she plays a master thief that somehow gets mixed up in this conflict. And honestly, I felt like she was a very welcome addition. Her character fit into this established dynamic nicely. And even though at first she would appear to be this character that just has everything figured out, she is flawed and she's forced to grow in real time the deeper and deeper she gets into this world. Yeah, yeah buzz deeper. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the action. Even if you take the amazing real-life base jump stunt out of the equation, which is incredible to behold, by the way. All of the action and fight sequences in this movie are very well done, and most importantly, they feel real. There's just something about seeing real cars on screen swerving around and trying not to hit each other. Or having real people perform choreographed fights in front of the camera. That's filmmaking to me. What is real? How do you define real? And that's the type of thing that the overuse of CGI has stolen from the theatrical experience. The final big action set piece is the only one that feels a bit too over the top, and it does seem to drag on for an extended amount of time, but it was still infinitely entertaining, and it was actually one of my favorite parts of the movie, and that's because it's once again taking things we've seen before and doing them even better. So good. If this movie had one flaw, I would say that it probably drags in a couple spots, but even that wasn't enough to distract me or take me out of the film in any way. Bottom line, to me, this is exactly what a movie is supposed to be. Showing me something I've never seen before, pulled off in front of the camera, while also giving me a story that both entertains me and makes me feel something. I'd be shocked if anyone who was already a fan of these movies didn't enjoy this one as well. It gives you everything you could ever want from a Mission Impossible movie and then some. I highly recommend that you see this movie on the big screen as it was intended to be seen. If nothing else, you know the work was put into it and it is deserving of your support. Without a doubt, it is my favorite movie of the year so far, even though it didn't have a whole lot of competition. But it was good enough that I'm going to give Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 the elusive Bill and Ted. Excellent! Y'all be cool. Right on.